I'm Greg Adamore, your host for uh, Experts of Southern Nevada. I'm the real estate coach, and uh, today I'm very happy to welcome to our show Eric Early, attorney at law. He's well known, specializes in real estate law here in Las Vegas. And uh, recently he did a seminar for uh, several realtors and uh, title company here in Las Vegas that I attended, did a great job. And I asked him on short notice to attend and uh, wanted to thank you for attending, Eric, today. And uh, can you tell us a little bit, of, you have a, a history, your family was in real estate. And yeah, yeah, my, my mother's still a broker up in, up in Utah yeah. and uh, I own a, a brokerage up there. I owned one up in Michigan as well. Yeah. Um, you know, real estate practice isn't just something we dabble in, it's, it's, it's my whole life. And uh, I, was a, I was a realtor for a dozen years before I became an attorney. Um, and I even went on and, and got a postdoctorate degree specifically in real estate development. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of development going on right now, mm -hmm. but an awful lot of short sales, loan modifications, and that type of stuff. And so that's what I've kind of uh, converted my practice into. And probably about 80% of my practice right now is helping homeowners. Yeah, they so. certainly need a lot of help in this uh, particular time uh, yeah. with what's been going on in our market in the last two or three years. So. Uh, one of the things that uh, been coming across a lot of our desks and a lot of us realtors are, are calling upon your uh, expertise for advice. Uh, uh, this uh, price pricing in Las Vegas seems to be going up so quick that you have to buckle your seatbelt, particularly with some of the home path properties that are mm -hmm. government owned properties and uh, a lot of our short sales that we're having some problems getting completed now are with also with Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Yeah. I understand you've taken them to task in the last what last part of the year and yeah the the last three or four months uh, Fannie Mae especially has been very aggressive in their in their pricing and and to understand what they're doing I mean they actually have some logic to it I'm, I, don't get me wrong I'm very upset at them because mm -hmm. it's causing a lot of pain for a lot of homeowners but mm -hmm. uh, what they're doing makes a certain amount of sense uh, if you were to go to say Zillow.com and look up your home mm -hmm. and they're going to have a graph. You're going to see this graph where you see the bubble of, of, of the market and then you see it popping. Mm -hmm. The problem is, and this is what Fannie Mae has an issue with, is if you, if you look at the natural appreciation, and if you were to draw a straight line of about 3% a year uh, right through that bubble, and you look at where prices are today, we're about 20%, maybe even 30% below where natural appreciation, if we had never had a bubble, Mm -hmm. uh, where that would be. And so the way Fannie Mae looks at it is, you know, that bubble, we had a market correction and so the bubble popped, but now we're below that. Mm -hmm. We're actually in a bubble right now, but the bubble is an inverted below market bubble. It's below where, where we ought to be. Mm -hmm. And and most buyers are willing to pay more than, than where we are. Mm -hmm. And if you were to go off the sold comparables, uh, you would find that um, you know, the market's higher than that. I mean, people are willing to pay more than what properties have sold for in the past. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the, the market's going up fast, mainly because groups like Fannie Mae are pushing. They're pushing the market up. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is they're pushing it up so high that you can't get an appraisal to appraise that high because mm -hmm. appraisers have to base it on sold comps, you know, mm -hmm. comparable properties that sold mm -hmm. in the last uh, three to six months. Mm -hmm. And so your FHA appraisal, uh, an FHA appraisal is going to have a problem. And uh, so your FHA buyers are, are getting to the closing, not, not, not getting to, to the closing table because their loans can't be approved. Uh, same with VA buyers. A lot of them are having issues. Right. Yeah, and I could see that the FHA and VA appraisers are going to be quite conservative by nature. Uh, VA appraisers, obviously, there's, they're looking into the fact that the buyer is putting a dollar down and they're loaning 100% of the money. And FHA, for a lot of reviewers, uh, may not realize this, but it's 3.5% down, still a very minimal amount in a today's low rate. So, so I could see where a buyer who wanted to live in the home mm -hmm. would be forced to pay cash for a home that's actually priced above the appraisal. Yes. And so basically, again, they're getting pushed around by the investors, the hedge funds, the big money people that are coming into Las Vegas and buying multiple properties for cash. Mm -hmm. So, um, and of course, those those investors don't want to pay twenty percent more than what the property's worth, mm -hmm. but Fannie Mae is is pricing it that high, mm -hmm. and so what what happens to a lot of these properties is is they get foreclosed on, mm -hmm. or 
you just wait it out and, and eventually maybe a buyer comes along and says, you know, I'm willing to pay that. And mm -hmm. and some of them are. I'd say about a third of our Fannie Mae properties are mm -hmm. they're getting sold, even though Fannie Mae is countered um, above where the market says it ought to be. Uh, some buyers are willing to pay that. And, and of course, that's shifting the market. It's causing the and, and it will help the appraisals too. So eventually it'll it'll work out, but we're in a transition that's very painful for some people. A right. lot, lot of people are gonna get foreclosed on. Oh yeah, and I guess the bank's willing to take that risk, maybe they'll foreclose on a thousand homes or so because they're raising the bar in prices. So one, yeah. let's say we have a home in your neighborhood, one of the buyer, you know, one of the people that are watching the show, they got a home in their neighborhood and maybe the average home's uh, 150,000 right there. Mm -hmm. If any may want 185 or somewhere in that area. And if they hold out, and get that 185, then the next time a home sale occurs in that neighborhood, they'll use that 185 sales price as a comparable. Then the FHA and the VA will will have some comparables. Exactly. To and reference. So in the end, it'll it, basically it'll end up popping the inverted bubble that I that I mentioned. But mm -hmm. just to give you a real life example, um, earlier today we had a counter offer from Fannie Mae. Um, and they they told us quite frankly that their appraisal came in at 148, but they're not going to settle for less than 168. Wow. And so we we found out what their they normally don't tell you what their appraisal came in at, mm -hmm. but uh, we found out because we we told them we know it didn't come in more than 120. And she mm -hmm. says no 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 it came in at 148, mm -hmm. but we're not going to settle for less than 168. Now mm -hmm. what do you do if you can't get an offer? Um, mm -hmm. You know the. I'll tell you what I would do. If you get a notice of default, mm -hmm. if you get a notice of default here in Nevada, you have the right to select foreclosure mediation. Mm -hmm. And foreclosure mediation can throw the brakes on the bank. It can it can cause Fannie Mae to have to come by law to the negotiating table. Mm -hmm. And and in mediation, there's a there's a provision for uh, you know if they act in bad faith. And and frankly, I think what they're doing right now is in bad faith. Mm -hmm. They're asking twenty thousand dollars more than a property's worth, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of tools in mediation. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you can what you can do, and it's only two hundred dollars to elect mediation. Two hundred dollars. Yeah, you got to do it within the first thirty days after you get that notice of default. So it's a short time frame. Oh yeah. And um, but if you elect mediation, there's uh, there's new rules effective this very month that the Supreme Court of Nevada put into place that make it so that the bank must negotiate, if not a loan modification, then, then a, a either a deed in lieu or a short sale. And mm -hmm. I really like the short sale provision because it mm -hmm. looks a whole lot better on your credit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a directive from Fannie Mae that indicates if they, if they do approve your short sale, mm -hmm. they will forgive the deficiency balance. Oh, and so that's, mm -hmm. yes, we have one from Freddie Mac uh, that came out February of last year. And we have one in in August that came out from Fannie Mae, um, you know, August of last year, and mm -hmm. they will forgive the deficiency if they approve your short sale. Problem is, they're going to approve your short sale twenty percent above market, oh, I see. and so it, it, bringing them to mediation is a great way to throw on the brakes, make them mm -hmm. negotiate in good faith, uh -huh. and um, and we can work it out. Right, right, and that that for our viewers is a key word. It's a real buzzword. Mediation. Remember that word. When you first get notified, you get a notice of default. Sometimes we call it an NOD. That's usually the blue tape on the house, certified letters, five or six letters that have come to you. And it says that you are now delinquent and you have to resolve the delinquency. And they give you a list of people to call and so on. But I think the first person you want to call is an experienced realtor and or experienced uh, attorney because these laws are changing. And there are help for the homeowners. Mediation is a very important thing. but as uh, and Mr. Early just said, if you do not respond within the first 30 days, that option's off the table. A lot of people, they get those letters, they don't know what it means, other than they know they're behind on payments, they know they're worried about trying to find a job. Right. That thing goes in a waste paper, they don't want to see it, it's bad news. And then that 30 days is up. And uh, so let's say somebody is paying attention and they get this notice of default. It just came in three weeks ago. If they respond to the mediation, get a hold of a realtor, get a hold of a, a good attorney there like yourself that does a lot of real estate law, they file the response. To, they send it to Carrison City, I think, a $200 money order. Yep. They, uh, they, they, need to, they need to send $200 into the uh, program administrator for the, 
foreclosure mediation. Mm -hmm. And they have a couple of forms they have to fill out. The forms are pretty simple. Mm -hmm. And those forms are not, uh, they don't have to be precise. I mean, you, you can do rough estimates on your, uh, on your expenses and stuff. But basically, it's a financial statement that you send in. You send in a copy of the notice of default along with it, but you, you send it certified mm -hmm. to the program administrator and send it certified to the trustee also. But when you get the notice of default, they're supposed to send you some uh, self-addressed envelopes to the program administrator and to the trustee. So that, mm -hmm. and, and they send you a copy of the documents. So it, it, they make it easy for you to file for mediation. Mm -hmm. They're required to do that by law. So mm -hmm. when they give you that notice of default, if they don't give it to you in that same letter, they're going to give you another letter within the next week that'll have that information in it. Mm -hmm. And I, I highly recommend it. If anything else, mm -hmm. it, it's going to buy you more time in the property. Yeah. Um, the new rules require more process. Mm -hmm. And that additional process is, <coughs> at, at, at a very minimum, it's going to buy you a couple of extra months. Mm -hmm. um, from, the, from the moment they record the notice of default, you do have three months by law before they can give you the notice of trustee sale. Once they give you the notice of trustee sale, though, you, you only got about 20 days. Mm -hmm. And so three months and 20 days from when they record the notice of default, that's not a lot of time. And mm -hmm. if you pay the $200 and you elect mediation, mm -hmm. um, I, I can't imagine it giving you less than an extra couple of months. Mm -hmm. and once you attend mediation, there's an appeal process that, that lasts 30 days. You, even if you don't appeal, if no one appeals, you still get the 30 days. Mm -hmm. And they can't uh, file the notice of trustee sale until that appeal period is over. So really, it, it buys you an extra couple of months. And so once the uh, mediation takes place, then uh, that has to be certified. That in itself is another 30-day extension. Is that, is that correct? There's a 30-day there's a appeal period, and that appeal period... Nothing, no foreclosure can happen during that. No notice mm -hmm. of default can, or no notice of trustee sale can go out. Uh -huh. And um, so at a minimum, just electing mediation can buy you a couple of extra months to try to figure things out with your property. Mm -hmm. But there, there are real tools at mediation. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you the one thing that, uh, that the banks screw up. If, if they don't show up at mediation with all the right documents, mm -hmm. with all the right signatures and all the right certifications, mm -hmm. then they cannot foreclose. But you have to get the mediator to mark the right box, indicating mm -hmm. that they didn't show up with the right certification mm -hmm. or the right signature. Mm -hmm. And if the mediator marks the right box, then they have to, the, the bank will have to start all over again with a new notice of default mm -hmm. and a new bite at the mediation apple for you. Mm -hmm. And and so it, it can really, I hate to say it, some people, they hire me just for that purpose. Oh, sure. You know, to find the, and, and I maybe I feel a little little dirty as an attorney doing doing this, mm -hmm. but some people just want to stay in the property a long time. And, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, if the bank doesn't have the right documents, then mm -hmm. they have that right. Sure, sure. Well, a and, lot of them are losing their, their home. They maybe yeah. lost their job, and they're just they're, trying to hang on to their car and keep their kids in school yeah, they're and desperate pay their circumstances. medical. Yeah. And, so I, I don't think there's any shame in, in, in giving help to them. Uh, however, uh, I've had most of my clients that I've advised to go into mediation, and, and the process, even before they revised the rules recently, uh, they're getting five or six months. Yes. You know, yes. So, and, and during that time, because of the uh, egg timer isn't turned over, in other words, the, the foreclosure stops uh, while the mediation is the process is in, being engaged in, mm -hmm. as a realtor, it gives me time to market their home, get an offer on their home, submit it to the bank. In other words, I submit an offer to the loss mitigation department, and uh, instead of and then they're looking at a situation. Well, well, if we go to mediation, we have to have all our documentation. A lot of them, especially with the big banks, don't have those in order. Oh, yeah. And like out of out of the dozens and dozens of dozens of uh, mediation you've been to, what, what would you say uh, a handful of people may have showed up completely prepared? Uh, I out of about forty me uh, about forty mediations that I've gone to, mm -hmm. I've only seen the bank come with everything that they need twice. Okay, so it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, I had a lady work in our office, an assistant in our uh, real estate office, and uh, and she had Wells Fargo, and she showed up mm -hmm. to mediation. They weren't prepared. She went in even without an attorney. And luckily, I told her to ask for the original, you know, uh, no need of trust. They didn't have that. They told her, don't worry about it. And a whole year went by, and they still haven't uh, 
resubmitted a new notice of default. So yep. the mediation is there to protect homeowners. I think our attorney general, like there's state laws that regulate the mediation, mm -hmm. and uh, there are legal recourse for our homeowners. It's imperative that people who are upside in their homes contact uh, an experienced uh, real estate office and attorney, and we work together, we collaborate. So when you work with me at Encore Realty, Encore Commercial Realty, I'll contact uh, Eric Early. I'll say, "Hey, we got we're in a little deep water on this deal. We might need a little leverage. Uh, we got a bank that's uh, being overly aggressive. They want an unrealistic price, or maybe they want the seller to bring money in, yep. and they're using uh, tough tactics. They're being bullies, and it, maybe in some cases the the bank may be doing that." Uh, we talked about mediation being a wonderful thing for the homeowner. Um, what other leverage uh, can you use, whether it be bankruptcy, or is there, is there other other things that we can go against the bank with to, to, to get some time and to get them to be realistic, to, to, to allow help to come? Absolutely, and, and, and bankruptcy is a great tool. A lot of times, in fact, with my practice, I do file bankruptcies, we do go down that road, but um, Far more frequently, we threaten bankruptcy, and we lay out the case for how the, the homeowner could file bankruptcy if he wanted to, and just that bluff, just basically that threat of being able to file bankruptcy gets the lender to step back. They really don't want you to file bankruptcy, because once you do, you discharge the debt, and uh, if the debt's discharged, then they only have the only leverage the bank has is the deed of trust. Your home is still collateral, mm -hmm. and uh, but it does stop them. I mean, you could file a bankruptcy the day before the uh, foreclosure sale, mm -hmm. and that puts them off for a couple of months, right. and, um, and and a lot of times longer than that. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact is, uh, once you file the uh, uh, you file for bankruptcy, it, it kind of throws the banks. Uh, whole track of foreclosure off off step mm -hmm. and um, they're not allowed to contact you anymore oh. and so some of the banks are real timid in, in how they pursue and if they don't do a motion for relief from the automatic stay you know it, it could be a long time before they actually mm -hmm. follow through with that bankruptcy or with that mm -hmm. foreclosure mm -hmm. um, I've seen some people go a couple of years mm -hmm. with without any action from the bank just because the homeowner filed uh, for a bankruptcy. Okay, right. But um, but just the threat of bankruptcy is usually enough to get good results. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a, there's a number of tactics that some of these banks use to try to manipulate people. And some homeowners, I've found, feel very fearful. Mm -hmm. Very feel, fearful. I, I've had elderly people that come to me and they think, well, are they going to take away my Social Security? Are they going to garnish my VA benefits? Mm -hmm. They can't do that. Right. There are federal statutes that protect you and protect your Social Security. Mm -hmm. Social Security is exempt from garnishment. VA benefits are exempt from garnishment. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a state law that exempts PERS. If you're retired and, and you're receiving PERS benefits, yeah, that, that's not going to be garnished. And so you've got some leverage, and, and sometimes all you got to do is have an attorney or, or someone with some knowledge in this area, mm -hmm. uh, contact the bank and say, look, this person, all they're receiving it, is stuff that can't be taken from them mm -hmm. by statute. Sure. You don't have anything. You can't, you can't get this big cash contribution you want. And, mm -hmm. and once someone stands up to the bank with that kind of knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, the bank backs off. All right. So the same with the IRAs. What are they exempt up to five hundred fifty thousand or yeah. something? Yeah, the principal is mm -hmm. exempt up to a half a half million dollars for your IRA, your four hundred one k account. Anything that's <coughs> a qualified tax deferred retirement plan oh. qualifies under that exemption. Okay. Um, uh, not only that, but there's other things like your car equity. You, you, mm -hmm. You're allowed fifteen thousand dollars worth of equity in your car. Uh -huh. You're allowed five hundred and fifty thousand dollars of equity in your home, so long as you filed your homestead exemption, mm -hmm. um, which is real easy to file. It's just a, yeah. a single page document invoking a statute. Uh -huh. And once you invoke that statute, uh, judgment creditors are, are blocked from taking your home mm -hmm. up to $550,000 of equity. Oh, yeah. And some, sometimes what we do is we'll engage in short sell planning with people. Mm -hmm. If they want to short sell their home and mm -hmm. get out from their under their debt, uh, I'll sit down with them and we'll do a planning session. And mm -hmm. Maybe they have money. But if they take mm -hmm. that money and they, they put it into their home, mm -hmm. not an upside down home, right. right? A home that they have equity in, mm -hmm. and as long as they're living in that home and, and uh, filed the homestead exemption, they get to keep that home. 
Yeah. And um, that there are other types of planning issues we can engage in sure. with, you know, asset protection trusts and so forth mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that can help protect a person's life savings. And mm -hmm. that way it enables them to go ahead and do the short sell sure. and the bank won't be so aggressive. I see. That's really good. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, if someone needs your help, uh, say, you know, uh, assuming they have a little bit of money and they want to contact me and you and the one thing that I, I always try to do is work in collaboration with a good attorney mm -hmm. like yourself and uh, that's why I had you on and <clears throat> mediation the threat of bankruptcy maybe they can make a initiate a, uh, a bankruptcy but they don't have to complete it is that correct that is true um, there are some tactics uh, we have in the past filed a bankruptcy because a bank wasn't budging Mm -hmm. They just were straight faced and mm -hmm. didn't think we were going to pull the trigger. And we filed the bankruptcy and mm -hmm. and uh, said, I, you know, we told you, we mm -hmm. told you we were going to file the bankruptcy. We filed the bankruptcy. Um, now this is, you know, you're you're basically you have no leverage. And the bank on you know, in this one particular instance, I think it was U.S. Bank, and they said, uh, look, uh, if you withdraw the bankruptcy, we'll cooperate. We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll give you the approval mm -hmm. and uh, they ended up issuing the approval and we withdrew the bankruptcy but when you withdraw a bankruptcy in that setting um, it's good to do it within 10 days there are some rules that that happen if, if you don't withdraw the bankruptcy quickly mm -hmm. then uh, you're basically prohibited from doing certain things for six months mm -hmm. so it, it's good to not uh, follow through if you don't have to Right, right. We avoid the bankruptcy if we don't need to. But a lot of people don't realize that uh, they may be facing a uh, a sale date on their home yeah. a week from now, two weeks from now. You call me, I get in touch with uh, Eric. We get, we sit down with you, have a planning session. If you don't have any money, maybe uh, uh, you could do a consultation if it's a really hardship situation, yeah. just to give you some help. Uh, it's goodwill, to, just out of compassion to, to help people because there are options. But you don't want to fight this battle alone. You want to deal with experienced realtors mm -hmm. and that have access to the best legal minds in this. Uh, in regard to, um, we talked a little bit about mediation, we talked about leverage and what, what's happening with the price going up with this bubble. Mm -hmm. um, people probably want to get these debts resolved. As a real estate agent for 35 years now, I, I, it, the whole industry has changed in the last five or six years. We're, we feel like we're more paralegals working uh, re debt resolution. We've had to learn about bankruptcy, mediation. It, it's an entirely new industry, so to speak, uh, and, and especially here in Southern Nevada, which, uh, you know, we are the epicenter, so to speak, for the foreclosure uh, market in the United States. So a lot of us have been taken to task. We're continually are upgrading our education, going to classes. Um, we're finding out more and more that we do have recourse, and the landscape changes from month to month. Let's say somebody's in a situation now, and, 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 and the prices we've acknowledged have been increasing. Yes. We've seen prices come up in the last year, and now with what Fannie Mae's doing to increase the bar, Maybe there's some people that are underwater, but they're not that deep underwater. Maybe they're fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Maybe they owe uh, two hundred on their home, and by golly, things are about to one fifty. And if they can just weather the storm, maybe in another year or two, they might actually not be upside down. Yeah. So some of these solutions may be very valuable if they would contact your office and ask questions, write down their questions, come in, and get a consultation. Um, we talked a little bit before the cameras was rolling a little bit about this uh, this twenty five billion dollar settlement that the banks mm -hmm. <coughs> required to respect. How does that affect <coughs> some of the people in our community here? You know, I've had a lot of clients receive letters from Bank of America, from Citibank, mm -hmm. um, from Chase that part of their principal is being forgiven, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, usually it's people who are delinquent already. Mm -hmm and the bank kind of knows, they kind of sense that they're not going to get that money. And so in order to satisfy their obligations under this $25 billion settlement, um, you know, they're, they're forgiving some of those loans, those second, those HELOC loans. Oh, yeah. And um, I haven't seen them forgive on any people that are current mm -hmm. on their mortgage, but uh, I have seen a lot of people forgive, you know, receive forgiveness on the HELOCs that are delinquent, if they've been delinquent for a while. Um, and I've also seen some decent principal forgiveness, um, which was pretty much unheard of prior to about, uh, I'd say prior, prior to May of last year. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really seen any real principal forgiveness, but now we're seeing real principal forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I had an Aquin loan that um, the person owed about 238 on, and they forgave. It was in mediation, 
that they forgave uh, all the way down to 68,000. So I thought that was remarkable. The guy was, yeah. he's still thanking me. You know, mm -hmm. he's, um, yeah. he's always thanking me for, I mean, that was just tremendous. A true Saved him $170,000. <laughs> yeah, of course now, uh, just to give you a little more information, they don't always do that. No, no. And no. Um, when we went to mediation, the bank didn't have a thing. They didn't have any documents. Mm -hmm. So you know, in the back of my mind, I'm always wondering, was there really a loan there? Oh, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. there is now, though, because they signed the modification agreement. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I had one with Chase where um, it was $1.3 million that was owed on the home. Uh, they signed... Um, a modification agreement. We just barely closed on this one, and Chase is forgiving a quarter of a million dollars every year for three years on the anniversary date of of the um, trial period payments. Wow. And uh, it's a permanent mod now, so they're locked into it as long as they make their payments on time. Wow. Uh, they're going to receive three quarters of a million dollars forgiven. The the what the ending balance is going to be is slightly less than what the property is worth right now because property is only worth about 650 and that's about what they're going to end up owing uh, three years from now so chase did a remarkable job on that on that principal forgiveness i, I was uh, astonished myself mm -hmm. a lot of folks too are uh, they're coming to me and they're ready to uh, for you know avoid foreclosure they want to short sell their homes yeah. They're looking for relocation money. Uh, can you comment a little bit, like perhaps the uh, co-op program for Bank of America? Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, they do have some good programs. Bank of America's co-op program. You can you can get some good moving expenses, some incentive expenses. Um, typically, we're seeing somewhere if you're in the co-op and and you combine it, especially if you combine it with half a, you can get upwards of five thousand uh, mm -hmm. dollars. If you're with Chase, uh, we had a deal where we got twenty thousand dollars. It's kind of like a lottery. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll they'll give moving allowances, but every mm -hmm. now and then you'll get some remarkable incentives. Yeah. And that particular one, there was a the sales price of the home was only eighty five thousand. Mm -hmm. And so you take twenty thousand dollars away that they gave for this uh, incentive, um, and they they actually paid our fees as well out of that mm -hmm. and. Uh, not out of the 20, but in addition to mm -hmm. the 20. Mm -hmm. uh, after realtor commissions and everything, I think the bank only netted about 45000 mm -hmm. And so it's not just uh, $20,000 on really expensive homes. Uh, sometimes they'll do it on a condo. I see. Yeah, so it's well, that's good news, and there's a lot of hope for the homeowners. Obviously, uh, new legislation is being passed all the time. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're getting uh, court cases. You're getting more cooperation from lenders. And... Uh, Having a real estate agent involved is always a good thing. You have to have a realtor to do a short sale. Yes. It's never been easier to do the short sale. They're giving money. They're reducing principal. Obviously, you want to uh, uh, have the services of a good attorney available to you. All of us who are very seasoned in the real estate business, like myself, will always consult with an attorney. And we usually, even if we have to help the client or pay for it, we want to make sure that they're completely safe. Uh, prices are going up. The economy's coming back. Vegas is recovering, unemployment slower, so uh, we're seeing a good new market here, and it's still an opportune time to short sell your home. So, uh, absolutely, you, I was going to just say uh, one one thing. Mm -hmm. Even though some banks are offering these big incentives, mm -hmm. I really don't want homeowners to get the idea that I mean, we've had one case mm -hmm. where the bank paid twenty thousand dollars from Chase. Right, that was excellent. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's. Three thousand. Yeah, that's forty-five hundred. Three thousand. Yeah, that, that's about the average, and yeah. and uh, and a lot of times, if you're earning good money, I, I wouldn't expect, I uh, wouldn't expect to be getting an incentive from a bank. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, you're in, you end mm -hmm. up paying one or two thousand. <coughs> if it's mm -hmm. Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae, mm -hmm. uh, they often ask for a cash contribution. Mm -hmm. But um, but if you're getting out of two hundred thousand dollars worth of debt for a couple of grand, that's a great deal. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you again, uh, Eric Early, our guest today, and uh, I'm Greg Adamore, your host. As always, every Tuesday at five o'clock, I'm your real estate coach, and we appreciate you tuning in to Experts of Southern Nevada. We'll see you next week.